Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to talk to you about rendering ambient occlusion in Nuke. But more specifically, I want to show you how to set up a render pass that only includes the contact and the interaction of a CG asset over an environment. The reason why I want to cover this today is because when a CG asset is being developed, most of the effort is put on making that asset as good as possible. But the interactions with the environment are just something that you know, sometimes just fall a bit short. So by the time you get it, uh, you get it in comp, you realize that the floor is maybe a bit too low, or just the the topology slightly different than what you have on the plate. So if you if you know how to generate a pass like this one, like I have here at the bottom, then that way you gain full control on your end, and then you know you'll you'll end up doing it if it if it just makes your comp look better. As a refresher, let me show you first how to set up an ambient occlusion pass. So what I have here in my scene is I have an environment geometry and I have an object or prop or whatever the asset is, right? So if we look at the scene node here, all I have is a sphere over a card, and that's the extent of it. So in order to uh, to shade this properly, you're going to need an ambient occlusion node. Right? And you're going to connect that to a uh, white constant. In this case, I have it set to RGBA with all channels set to 1. And then that gets applied through an apply material, and that, that just uh, attaches that shader to your object. Then you do the same for the environment. And remember, this needs to go through a ray render to render properly. If you do this in a scanline render, it's just not going to work. So once you have that set up, that's kind of the extent of it. You've, you've done your ambient occlusion. But we're looking to get rid of the object. And what I see a lot of people doing is some people just, instead of connecting an ambient occlusion node, they just do this, right? So they just connect the white constant and say, well, that way I got rid of the asset. The problem with this is that this can introduce edges, right? And it doesn't give you full control over what's happening in that background behind the environment, behind that asset that you're adding. So while yes, you can get you can get away with doing this, this is not necessarily the correct way of doing it. So what you want to do is you actually it's as simple as just connecting it to a black constant, right? And make sure that that black constant has an alpha of zero, because if you have an alpha of one. Then you're just going to be introduced. You're just going to giving yourself more problems than you need. So make sure you set it to zero, and that way you can just have something that is the interaction, but not the asset. So a very quick one today, but hopefully something that helps you out. I, I find that you know a lot of times I end up doing these this for my shots, and it just helps me. I, I like having control, flexibility, and and, and being able to change things. Um, in order to make my life easier. So hopefully you find you find this useful and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.